Uh, tonight, I would like to bring to your attention the opposition to the proposed South Coast Marine Park, a public grassroots organisation Oceans for Everyone Association has contacted me for assistance in bringing this issue to the awareness of the council in this chamber. The organization is dedicated to ensuring that the voices of the people living along our coast are heard and respected in matters concerning our marine environment. The marine park proposal, part of a promise to deliver 5 million hectares of protected marine areas in five years fails to consider the environmental, economic and social impacts on our local communities and industries in Esperance, Jeremungup, Ravensthorpe and Dundas. The proposed marine park plan threatens the viability of already sustainable fisheries and unfairly restricts the whole community's ability to access this public amenity for a range of socially and practically beneficial reasons. The reasons that these communities are against the proposed marine park are as follow. One, there's a lack of scientific basis. The placement and size of the proposed marine park and its designated zones are not grounded in scientific evidence. The boundaries of proposed zones have been placed either arbitrarily or on the slightest justification. Point two. Currently, 48% of Australian waters are already designated as Commonwealth marine parks, vulnerable species and habitats, including in the Recherche's archipelago, are already protected by existing conservation plans and other laws. Number three, economic impact on local fisheries. The commercial fisheries in this area are sustainable and operating on such a small scale that further restrictions are illogical. There are only 12 commercial fishers, on average, operating between Bremer Bay and a South Australian border at any one time. Point number four, the ineffectiveness of marine parks, according to uh, <laughs> Professor Ray Hilborn, a renowned fisheries scientist, emphasises that marine uh, protected areas or MPAs are often ineffective. When someone proposes establishing MPAs, the first question to ask is, what is the objective? How would you measure success? And what alternative actions would achieve the same or better results, says Hilborn. The Oceans for Everyone Association, uh, the Oceans for Everyone Association has collected 6,366 signed mandate letters addressed to our parliament, demanding a stop to all negotiations in regards to the proposed marine park. They have also written to the Attorney General and our Governor General with the collection of mandate letters representing the majority of the population within the Shire of Jeremungup, Thravensthorpe, Esperance and Dundas. The Attorney General referred their concerns on to the Minister for Environment. When the mandates clearly bring forth an issue of concern in a legal manner, while I concur that only a court can mandate, the people have asked for assistance from the Attorney General. The Minister for the Environment responded with a letter written and signed by his Chief of Staff. Her response does not address the concerns of the population in a proactive way. Is this an appropriate response to the concerns of the people of Western Australia? I think not. Their concerns are being completely disregarded. The concerns expressed by the organisation represent the majority of the affected population and therefore the will of the people. And these are being disregarded by the Attorney General and the Minister for the Environment. The Secretary of the Governor General responded with a letter noting that His Excellency will take any forthcoming advice in Executive Council. The difficulty here being that the Executive Council consists of the above mentioned Attorney General and Minister for Environment. The Oceans for Everyone Association rightly believes that the government's handling of this issue is deserving of a vote of no confidence in the government. As the voice of the people, 
have been disregarded in this matter, I have to agree. I seek leave to table 10 of the mandate letters and the inadequate response from the Env Environment Minister's uh, Chief of Staff and have this incorporated into Hansard, please. <laughs>